Hallelujah. Come on, give the Lord a big God bless you. Hey, hey. Woo, the Lord is in the house. Give him a standing ovation. He deserves it. Hallelujah. What a blessing of the Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, I hope you had a good night's rest. So turn around, shake somebody's hand, tell them you love them, and you might be seated for just a few moments. Praise the name of the Lord. Ho, ho, ho. Hallelujah. The Lord is good. Did you enjoy last night? Didn't Brother Copeland knock it out of the park last night? I tell you what, he, he shucked the corn like we say in South Louisiana. <laughs> Praise God. What a blessing it is. <laughs> Praise God. Thank you. Now, if this is your first service in the Believers Convention, stand up. If this is your first one, look at here. Look at here. Look at the people. My God. Give them a good hand clap. Isn't that a blessing? Thank you for coming. Praise God. You're the watching them all over the internet. Call a friend. Tell them to turn that television on. Get on KCM.org and watch this thing. God will minister life to you and bless you. If you got your Bibles, I'd like you to turn with me today to the book of Romans chapter 12. Yesterday morning, I told the people, or actually, actually yesterday afternoon, I told the people that I would be buffeting during the whole week, which preach, I'm going to preach five different, different things. And I preached on mirror, mirror on the wall. Did y'all enjoy that yesterday? <laughs> Try to cover a lot of territory, make you understand that your belief system and your believing system got to be one and the same so that things work every time instead of sometime. My wife, Kathy's here. Kathy, stand up. Lord, I've got it. <laughs> Hallelujah. We were June the 6th of this year. We were married 43 years. Isn't that something? You should have seen me when I was young. I looked like her. <laughs> Hallelujah. I got this sermon, actually, or this thought. I am a thought preacher. I, I, I look for thoughts because preaching should never supersede thought. It should make you think. And sometimes people get so deep, they drown because they can't figure out what they're thinking themselves. And to me, I don't know about you, but I like things that work. Not some of the time or at the gospel casino where you're gambling, shooting dice, hoping that God hears it, but to just believe his word. Now, I'm a partner with KCM for I don't know how many years now, a bunch of times, and, and, I, I, and I wait for my partner letter. Just like I have partners in my ministry, I send out partner letters. Brother Copeland sends out partner letters. And... Um, Kathy makes sure that, it, you know, if I want to read something, she puts it at a certain place and she'll know I'll read it. And, and that's all I'm going to tell you about where the place is. <laughs> and uh, y'all do the same thing then, huh? Glory to God. <laughs> and I was reading that part of the letter a few months back and the statement that Brother Copeland said it touched me. You know, and I, I began to meditate and concentrate on that. And he said, you know, you need to have a word rule mind. And when he said that, it went off in me, the word rule mind. So that's what I'm going to deal with in my session today. So Romans chapter 12, very, very familiar scripture in verse one of the King James Version. Yeah. Glory to God. I beseech you. <laughs> I, want, I expect you to do that after I finish preaching. I hope you enjoyed this thing. Glory to God. <laughs> Romans chapter 12, verse one. Oh, okay. <laughs> Once is enough, isn't it? Glory to God. Anyway, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. Most people present their bodies to God dead, hoping God might do something. Holy, which means you can be holy. Jesus said, be you holy, for I am holy. Acceptable unto God. So if it's acceptable, there's sometimes some things are not acceptable. Which is your reasonable service? In other words, it's not hard, it's reasonable. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind or your soul, which is the mind, will, and emotion, that you, everybody say me, me. 
That means you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. To be a total success in Christianity or to receive what you're believing for, you have to have a word rule mind. See, I don't think with my mind, I think with the word. And I'll be talking a little bit about that a little later on some other sermon, see. Because everything God tells me to do is unbelievable and impossible. But yes, it's doable. Everything. Everything is done. And if you notice it, you can't do any of it by yourself. And I have been saying, believe the unbelievable and receive the impossible. Now to understand that, you see, so many people say, I, I need to get my spirit to grow. No, you don't. Your spirit's in 100% contact with God, believes everything God says, walks with God, has no problems at all with God. Well, your problem is, is in your soul. In your mind, your will and emotion. And it's very important, the soul, because that's where the decision is made to recreate the spirit. So where you get born again, see, that's where you make that decision. And the body just does whatever the soul tells it to do. And sometimes the body does get confused because it don't know what's going on. That's why the body gets very confused uh, if you eat too much. Did you know that? It gets confused. It starts sending food down the pike. The body thinks, what's going on? Must be a famine coming. <laughs> Otherwise, they wouldn't be sending all this food down here. So uh, store it in the back. And something happened to me the other day. I thought that was just so funny. The lady said, can I take a picture with you? I said, yes, ma'am. You certainly can. So, I mean, I took and I, and, I, and I put my hand around her like, and I did this. She goes, oh, my God. And I thought, something wrong? She said, I hope you didn't feel my back fat. I said, what'd you say? She said, I hope you didn't feel my back fat. Your back fat? Let me help every woman in it. Ain't no man looking at your back fat. I ain't never, heard, I'm going to be 64 next week. I never heard a man say, did you see the fat on that woman's back? <laughs> he ain't looking at your back. He's looking a little lower. Can't you understand that? Forget about your back. Your back got nothing to do with this. Back fat. But see, because how you got it was it filled up the bottom and then it started climbing up the back. <laughs> this got to go somewhere. I wanted to wake you up a little bit this morning. Glory <laughs> to God. He says, be you transformed by the renewing of your soul or your mind. So write this down here if you're taking notes. The word rule mind is in continual change. I mean, that's from yesterday to today. It's in continual change by a new heart, new dispositions, and a new way. Every day your soul is different. It's your spirit that's recreated in Christ so you can become, your soul can become what your spirit knows to do. Yeah. So the word rule mind is in continual change by a new heart, a new dispositions, and a new way. Now the Bible says, this, and I want you to write this down too, by obedience you come to know what is pleasing to God. If you want to know what's pleasing to God, it's all done through obedience to his word. As Jesus said in St. John chapter 7, verse 17, if any man will do his will, he shall know, no, not believe, he shall know of the doctrine. That's St. John 7, verse 17. So you know what? I got to find out what God knows so I can do what God tells me to do. You see what I'm saying? Now to accept it, I've got to have a word rule mind. Because if you don't, you got trouble. How, I mean, the reason why people backslide is because they never renew their mind. They never, they, 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 they conform instead of transform. And what in hell do you want? What does hell have to offer that you're willing to go back to get that? Do you understand what I'm saying? That's why it irritates when, when people are looking all over the scripture to find something uh, to appease their flesh when you ought to be looking for scripture to crucify your flesh. I mean, what else you want to do that the world does? When God said you be a separate and a holy people. So by obedience, you come to know what is pleasing to God. As Jesus said, if any man will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine. See, it's the word rule mind. Write this down. The thin veneer of Christianity darkens the vision and deadens the spiritual senses. The thin veneer of Christianity darkens the vision and deadens the spiritual senses. You see, because see, people never really serve Christ. They serve Chris. It's called Christianity. That's why there's so many different forms of it. Yet there's only one Christ. 
You got to understand there's some people that grow up that never hear about God. You know, my father who went home to be with the Lord last year, almost made it to 89, had one of the most wonderful home goings you ever saw in your life. Called me up. He said, would you come and visit me? You and Jody and Kathy and bring Meredith the baby so I can just play with her. He said, because I'm going home to be with Jesus. I said, are you sick? No, I ain't sick. I'm just tired. I'm going home. So we went over there on Monday and we played. He played with, jo uh, with Meredith and, and he looked at Jody because he could see Jody when she was little in Meredith. And boy, look, he said, son, you're looking good. I said, I'm feeling good, dad. He said, good. He said, now don't get all shook up. He said, I'm, I'm getting out of here. I've had enough. You know, and I thought, well, he's getting a little old now. You know, he's just kind of, he kind of slipping a little bit. And I didn't say that to him, but I thought, mm-hmm. So he tells Joyce, he's, you know, he, he, my mother went home to be the Lord in 1982. Then he married another woman named Esther, who I introduced to him. It was one of my partners, and he lived with her for 20 years, married to her for 20 years, and she died. And daddy don't stay alone, so <laughs> she's very long, you know. So he married another woman who is the same, a little younger than Kathy. <laughs> That's right, my father. I never forget the first word he said. He said, I'm a happy man. <laughs> That's what you say. I can tell he's happy. <laughs> now, he was married to Joyce, what, six years? I guess something like that. And so he calls Joyce and he said, now, Joyce, you know, I love you and everything, but it's time me are going, going, going home be the Lord. And, you know, Joyce said the same thing. He kind of thinking, you know, you, you know you're, getting, you're slipping here, see. But you see, he had fought a good fight. He had finished his course, as far as he was concerned, and he had kept the faith. That was on Monday. On Thursday, he went home be with the Lord. Now, you got to understand something about my father real quickly. My father didn't never, he, he, you know, sometimes he'd get a little tired, but he didn't want people to know he's tired. So he, he, he came up with a sign with, with, with Joyce. He said, look, he said, when I'm ready to go, I'll do a, something with my eye like that. And then you tell people, well, you know, we got to go. We got to do some things. Because, you, you know, he didn't want to be embarrassed. He let Joyce take the hit. You know what I'm saying? That's our dad. <laughs> You know, he, you know, he, you know, and Joyce would do it, you know. So they come up with this sign, and that was the time for him to go. It's time for me to go. So he tells Joyce this. This is on Thursday. She fixes him a nice breakfast, and he eats a nice lunch. He said, I think I'm going to take a nap. Listen to this. This will blow your socks off. Now, you know, this is the same week, okay? He takes a nap, and he wakes up about, I don't know, about an hour and a half, something like that. He calls Joyce, and he said, now, Joyce, I'm going home with the Lord today, but before I leave my body, I'm going to give you the sign. You know, I did when, he, when one leaves leave somebody's house. She goes, Oh, he's starting to slip a little bit. She, he, she said, okay, Paul, my dad was, he kind of stands up with my father. His name was Paul Albert Duplantis. His nickname was Peanut, but they all called him Wilbur. <laughs> Go figure. I said, they called him Wilbur. His nickname was Peanut, but his name was Paul. His nickname was Peanut because he's short, didn't like being called short. But his real name was Paul Albert Duplantis. They called him Wilbur. I asked him, Wait, where, where did Wilbur come from? He said, I don't know. I just answered it. That's a true story. I thought I was my only family like that until I met Kathy's family. Now, they got some wild names, that. She got some cousin named T.D. and Tudu. I said, what? Is this a T.D. and Tudu? I said, who's this guy, Chon? Chon? What does that mean, Arnold? Why don't you call him Arnold? Because his name is Chon. Go figure. That's Cajun, you know what I'm saying? So he tells, he tells Joyce, he said, now look, before I leave my body, I'm going to give you the sign that I'm getting out of here so you'll know, so you won't be shocked. So she just kind of smiles. So they talk about another hour. And then she just, they just have a nice conversation talking about all that. All of a sudden he says, hey, Joyce. And he went home to be with the Lord. He gave her the sign. Freaked her out. Now watch this. He brought his body to the funeral. See, this is a renewed mind. He ain't worried about death. Death is nothing to my dad. Now, you're supposed to have, in, in, in South Louisiana, they're big into death. You know what I mean? Everything's big into death. Big, big into death. You know, it's got the flowers everywhere, hoo, hoo, screaming and hollering. You even hate the guy. <laughs> just cry, you know. I'm just, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it's just terrible. <laughs> so, but the family comes first to view the body. They open up that casket, and I like that fell out because there was a sign at my daddy's head in the coffin like this that he wrote and told Joyce, now, put this in my coffin. And it said this. When we buried him with it, it says, hello, folks, this is not me. Am I telling the truth, guys? I went. That's true. He go, I went, God, this is not me. I have been promoted to heaven. These are two scriptures to let you know that the evidence of it that I'm in heaven. So have a nice day. Am I telling the truth? I'm home be with the Lord. That's my father. <laughs> so I asked my oldest brother, did you know about that? No. Joyce didn't tell us. She said, your dad wanted that. But so he was a very unique man 
and <laughs> in that kind of way, you know. I, it just is amazing. See, he didn't want me to, I always usually preach all the funerals for the, for the family. He said, I don't want you just doing that. He said, no, he said, man, he said, have fun, enjoy yourself. That ain't me, I'm out of here. Now he actually believed that and walked it because his mind was renewed. See, he didn't live in the thin veneer of Christianity, which darkens the vision and deadens the spiritual senses. You follow what I'm saying? Yeah, he, he wasn't a religious man, he was a born again man. Do you understand what I'm saying? So that really, honored. and then this Christmas, or actually 2012 Christmas, I see my brother coming with a basket of fruit and stuff. I thought, what, what, what are you doing? This, was it Christmas Eve or, or the day before Christmas Eve? And I opened the door, he, I see, he said, Merry Christmas, this is from Daddy. I said, Wayne, well, Daddy dead. <laughs> he, said, <laughs> he said, you ain't gonna believe this. I said, what? He said, you know how every year he gave me $50, gave Mark $50, and gave uh, uh, Deborah, my sister, $50. He would put it in an envelope and give it to me. He said, me, he knew I didn't want the money. I prefer fruit and a basket and all that kind of stuff. You know, before he died, he went and get my Christmas gift. Went, picked the fruit out, all the kind of different things. He knew I liked certain things and put it in the basket. He said, now make sure this is delivered so Jesse can have his Christmas gift on Christmas, even though I'll be in heaven. Now that's shocking, but that's thinking ahead. I wonder what's going to happen this year. <laughs> I don't know. Who knows? Ain't nobody saying nothing. <laughs> because you see, and I'm saying this first, then I'm going to get into this. My father never heard of Jesus Christ, ever. My grandfather never went to church, and they, none of his children never went. In fact, my Uncle Dennis introduced my father to the name of Jesus by accident. My Uncle Dennis was my mother's brother, my old, her oldest, uh, oldest brother. And, you know, we were Christian and confirmed Catholics. So I, maybe some of you have done this. Every time you pass a Catholic church, you make a sign of the cross. Anybody remember that? Oh, your hand up. Am I correct? You know, you, you see the Catholic. Make a sign of the cross. So my dad was in the car with my Uncle Dennis. Dad was only about 16 years old. So my, they passed uh, St. Francis de Sale Catholic Church. So my Uncle Dennis goes, my dad said, what you doing? He said, I just passed the church. What church? That church. Well, what's that? That's the cross. What cross? Never, ever. Not one word was ever spoken about God at all in my dad's eye. None. He said, Wilbur? <laughs> Jesus. He said, Jesus who? Jesus Christ. Jesus. The son of God. Son of God. Are you kidding me? Are you serious? He said, yeah, he was born. <laughs> Jesus, the son of Mary. He said, Mary who? <laughs> Uncle Dan said, I don't know her last name. Did you? Her name just Mary. <laughs> Well, what's Jesus' last name? <laughs> My goodness said, Christ. <laughs> but Brother Copeland corrected that. That's not his last name. My dad never heard of Jesus. None of that. And yet he was the first one to get born again. And thank God that Uncle Dennis made the sign of the cross. He said, you never been in a church? Uh, well, no. He said, well, let's go in there. Went in there. He went, well, this is a, this is a nice place. And that's when he saw Mary. He said, so that's her? He said, you don't know her last name? <laughs> he said, no, sir. Just Mary. He said, just as her first name, Mary's last name. No, just Mary. I'm serious. I'm not, I'm, I'm not just telling you a story. When they just did not know him, Mary. Uh, have you ever thought of Mary's last name? So Uncle Dennis said, Jesus and Nathan. Oh, that's his last name? No, that's where he lives. Oh, okay. What did he do? He died for your sin. He died for my sin. What sin? Sin. What do you mean sin? Never discuss that. None of that. See, they, my, my grandfather was a sharecropper way out in the boondocks, and they just didn't... He worked seven days a week, 12 hours a day. That's just the way it was. But when dad got born again, he received the word rule mind. He had an insatiable thirst for the word of God. So the thin veneer of Christianity didn't darken his vision or deaden his spiritual senses. Write this down. The word rule mind must have strength and courage to discriminate and must refuse to conform. The word rule mind must have strength and courage to discriminate. You have to. And must refuse to conform. Be not conformed as well, be you transformed by the renewing of your mind. So you'll learn to discriminate. You see, I made up my mind that I wanted everything God said, but I didn't know everything God said. Because everywhere I went, they never preached everything God said. They preached certain doctrinal creeds. They had their 10 uh, uh, doctrinal things. They never really preached the whole Bible or the, called it the whole counsel of God. See, I never heard of really that you could prosper until someone told me 
uh, a guy named Kenneth Copeland, who I did not know from Adam. I met Brother Copeland in the elevator in Houston, Texas. Just then, we, our eyes just met. Little did I realize, right there, our destinies would, would come together. He goes, hello, I'm Kenneth Copeland. Well, that didn't mean nothing to me. I went, I'm Jesse DePlante, how you doing? That's it, you going to the meeting? What meeting? Oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah, I, I'm going with a friend of mine. I didn't know he was a guest speaker. And when they, uh, Brother John Olsen introduced him, I said, that's that guy in that elevator. That's how I met Kenneth Cope, just by simple, wasn't by accident, it was on purpose. God was taking our destinies and molding them together at that time, and yet I did not even know that. I was so shocked when he finished preaching, everybody ran to the tape table to buy the tape. I thought that was dumb. I said, Kathy, you just heard it. Why are they going to buy it? They just heard it. I can understand going to buy something else. Why are they going to buy this one? She said, because they, well, they just heard it. I said, well, I know they just heard it. So why do you want to buy it? Get something you hadn't heard. <laughs> First time I ever heard of Kenneth Hagin, Kenneth Copeland, I thought, they don't only know one thing, faith. They preach the same thing over and over. Don't they got something new? <laughs> See, because I thought once you was a minister, every time you crack that pulpit, you better come up with something different and something new. That's just the way it was. And it was kind of a bragging rights thing, you know, that I preach Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, all different sermons for years and never touch the same thing. That's why most people never learn or never grow because they hear something one time and you never get it one time. You see, the process of knowing and believing has to, has to, you have to constantly hear, not heard, but hear. You see, so you have to learn to discriminate, see? And when you learn to discriminate, you will refuse to be conformed. So I began to read what God said and what God didn't like and what God does like. And I found it very simple till you get around a theologian. It's because he wants to pull something out of there from some definition, so many different ways to try to pull it and bend it to his way of thinking. When we should think what God says, don't think with your mind, think with the word. Now, I believe in study and words. So don't misunderstand. I'm not being critical of that. But what I'm saying is sometimes it's like the dictionary. Normally you have four definitions to a word. So a lot of Christian people pick the definition they like the best. Yet the first definition in the dic dictionary is the strongest to that meaning. But it'll go down further if you go read a dictionary and you'll find the fourth one means something. Not quite, but see, so some people, that's how they, that's how they preach the Bible. Whatever they feel that they like the best is what they take. See, I never did like vengeance. I, I, I read that vengeance is mine. I said, no, Lord, let it be mine. You take too long. <laughs> I said, I'm not dealing with vengeance here. I'm dealing with justice. I said, I'm not, I, I'm not vengeful, man. Just justice. Justice. You know what I mean? Ju whatever it takes, justice. Whatever. You do what you got to do. <laughs> it ain't vengeance. You don't worry about that. Put that in a garbage bag and walk away. <laughs> that shocked you, didn't it? When you're raised in the streets of New Orleans, that's how you think. You understand what I'm saying? That's what my grandfather said. You don't develop a conscience. What's the matter with you? There ain't no such thing as a conscience. Because you may have to do something. You do what you got to do. You wash your hands in front walk away. That's why the Mississippi River is out there. He was serious about that. But thank God mama got him saved seven days before he died. So you keep hitting that. It's like a woodpecker. You're going to get through that tree. You just keep hitting it. You will develop something there. Uh, this is where I want to get to here. I'm just, uh, I'm, I'm about ready to get into what I really want to get to. Right here, write this down. <laughs> Being a Christian must involve the power to resist propaganda. You see, there's a lot of Christian propaganda. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, not in popular opinion. You know, I'm not interested in anybody's popular opinion. That's good. That's good. I, I've had people say, you want to know what I think about that? No, I don't mean that to be rude. I want to know what God said. See, Christian propaganda is this, what to do when God doesn't heal. That's Christian propaganda. You know, I've studied a lot of World War I and World War II, and I thought, why did we have World War II? Because they didn't figure it out, learn it in World War I. World War I was so, supposed to be the war that ended all wars. But that didn't work because, you see, when people try to force people to do things, when people should have a free will and a free choice. Now, see, people couldn't understand the growth of the Nazis. Why did the Nazis grow so fast? Their greatest asset was Goebbels. He was the prime minister of propaganda. See, he made people think that a person, a Jew, became a rat, a Juden rat. Now, you know, you don't cry when you kill a rat. That's propaganda. You'd be surprised how much propaganda are in Christian magazines and Christian things all over the world today. 
You see, I mean, even though God explicitly says some 30, some 60, some 100, that ain't right. It's in red. Well, I tried that. didn't work. Tried didn't get nothing done. Just because you didn't get it don't mean it didn't work. Christian propaganda. You know how God, sometimes he does, sometimes he don't. No, he always does. Just sometimes we don't. Well, that faith don't work because you didn't work it. You see what I'm saying? Christian propaganda is one of the strongest forces Satan uses because he uses ministers to produce it. Somebody you may esteem highly. I've had some friends of mine years ago that couldn't understand faith. They wouldn't read the Bible, just read a Kenneth Hagin book. I, I don't doubt Brother Hagin was a great man of God. Don't misunderstand me. But he surely wasn't Jesus Christ. And he would tell you that himself. So let me say it again. Being a Christian must involve the power to resist propaganda. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, not in popular opinion. So people are always asking me, what do you think about this? Make no difference what I think. It's what God said. Yeah, but they didn't get healed. That don't change it. I had one man attack me one time in the car, picked me up and said, I want to ask you a question. We prayed for sister so-and-so and she died. I didn't know sister so-and-so from Adam. I looked at him and said, well, did she die in faith? He said, what? I said, did she die in faith? He said, no, we fast and pray. I said, no, no. I said, answer that question. Did she die in faith? He said, well, yes. I said, then what's your problem? I said, the Bible said these all died in faith, not receiving the promise. I said, you ever thought you'll find out in mind, bless God, she saw something you don't see? And it, like some women did, said, oh, no, don't heal us, Jesus, so we can obtain a better resurrection. That's in the book of Hebrews. Don't, come, don't deliver us. It's not that he wasn't going to do it. They saw something you didn't see. There's some things you're not going to know till you get there. I'm Jesse Duplantis and I approve this message. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying here? When you understand. See, that's all Christian propaganda. Always basing what you believe on what somebody did or didn't do or received or didn't receive. What did God say? See, a, a, a transformed mind don't make no difference what anybody says. It's what God said. Well, you don't never make mistakes? Yeah, only when I want to. But God said that how be it when the spirit of truth has come, he'll guide me in all truth. So if I just let him be my guide instead of me trying to get in front of him. You follow what I'm saying? Yeah. Christian propaganda. It's so strong out there. You'd be surprised. And they use it in every way, shape, or form. That's why a lot of people don't like the first fruits message. Because you see, they use Christian propaganda to get it. You don't pay first fruits on your income. You pay first fruits on your increase. Let's go read the Bible. It's your increase, not your income. Boy, that made you stop and think, didn't it? <laughs> but you know, people trying to just get as much as they can. I understand that. That's not the issue. If you believe God, you'll have all you can. All you can receive. People are always worried about tithing. Should I tithe on the net or the gross? Well, how much you want? What is the motivation for tithe and obedience? What is the rate of exchange? Open windowed heaven. Rebuke the devourer for your sake. What part of that you don't understand? See, that's not a money thing. That's an obedient thing. It's not a suggestion neither. It is a command. Well, it, it, it's not in the New Testament. Man, go on home. You, you, good Lord, you, you're so completely in propaganda, you have no concept of what you just said. You can't even separate the two. Because God's got one leg in the Old Testament and one leg in the New Testament. He is everything in the Old Testament and he's everything in the New Testament. Why is the New Covenant a better covenant? Because you, you can come boldly through the throne of grace without a rope tied around your ankle. <laughs> <laughs> You want, oh, I want to go back to the old covenant. No, you don't. You're going to die, sucker. <laughs> you touch the mountain, you're dead. You touch that ark, you're dead. You better make sure you're right. But in the new covenant, Lord Jesus, glory to God, he threw away the rope. He destroyed the curtain. So you could come boldly to the throne of grace. Why? He was trying to renew people's mind. Did anybody just see that wonderful series called the Bible? I think the best part of that whole series was when that Jesus climbed in Peter's boat. Peter confused, what the man doing? He said, what are we going to do? And I love this actor that played Jesus. He said, we're going to change the world. Man, I stood up and said, yeah. I was watching that. I have a theater in my home. I, was, I stood up, I said, yeah, we're going to change the world. We're still changing it. You see what I'm saying? That commission is still going forth. 
So I refuse any kind of Christian propaganda. So I learned to dis discriminate and find out what did that man say and what did God say? Right. Write this down. Beware of what environment you put yourself in. Yeah. Beware of what environment you put yourself in. Why? It will color your thoughts, your conceptions, your habits, and it will rule your actions. Your environment will color your thoughts, your conceptions, your habits, and will rule your actions. Your environment will do that. If you want to change somebody's mind, change somebody's life, you change their environment. You see, because you are what you is. That may not be good English, but it makes good sense. So beware of the environment you put yourself in. I am very aware of the environment that I'm in. I don't allow myself to get into places that I shouldn't be because the Bible says shun the very appearance of evil. Why? Because it'll color your thoughts. It will mess up <laughs> conception, it'll, your habits, and it'll rule your actions in every area. You see what I'm saying? But see, the word rule, mind, goes by what God said. Coming from the spirit to a transformed mind to a crucified body. It's actually very simple because you're a triune being. Some people don't believe in the Trinity. Okay, don't. But there's God, the Father, God, the Son, God, the Holy Ghost. How do you know that? Because there's Jesse the Spirit, Jesse the Soul, and Jesse the Body. The difference between my, tr my Trinity and His Trinity, <laughs> God the Father is not trying to renew God the Son. And God the Son is not trying to crucify God the Holy Ghost. But Jesse the Spirit is renewing Jesse the Soul, and Jesse the Soul is trying to crucify Jesse the Body. And sometimes the body wins out on all of it. Because sometimes it just feels good to feel good. Sometimes you want a little justice. Let's just be honest. There's some people say, I'm leaving that church. And instead of you going, oh, please don't. You turn around and go, yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank God they're leaving. Well, that's not right. See, you sound like a, you know, when you tell people to go away, I'm going to deal with this this week too. You know, Jesus, I'll give you a hint. I'll probably do, uh, not Wednesday night, but I'll do this Thursday. They, uh, the disciples said, send, send the crowd away. They didn't ask to be sent away. They didn't ask to be sent away. Where are you going to send them to? He has the words of life. That's Thursday. They didn't ask to be sent away. So why would you want to send them away? That's why Jesus said, well, you feed them. Huh? See, Jesus believes you can do some things you don't believe you can do. When are we going to believe what Jesus says about us? Mm, mm, mm. So beware of what environment you put yourself in. It will color your thoughts, conceptions, habits, and rule your actions. You see, you never take your guidance from the world's frown or smile. When the world's smiling at me, that's not guiding me, always frowning at me. I'm always constantly being criticized somewhere. If you're on television as much as I am, and I don't mean that pridefully, I'm on a lot, a lot of television. You understand what I'm saying? All over the world, translated 14 different languages. It, it, a, lot of, a lot of people don't realize how much it is. Sometimes I don't myself. But I'm telling you one thing, boy. I mean, I, mean, I, I get people saying, now, you know, you, 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 you can't believe that way. Oh, yes, I can. Jesus said I could. And when they're all smiling at me, ah, I've learned that, son. They'll smile at you and kid you at the same time. I actually would prefer to frown because I know something's coming. You know, people pray for God to bless you till you get blessed. Because when you get blessed, then they get mad because you blessed too much. When I built my house, I mean, my Lord, I never invited the media to come. I never invited helicopters to come over my house. But since they came, I went outside and waved. What do you want me to do? I mean, you hear the... Sound like Vietnam. Nah, 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 nah. nah. <laughs> I didn't invite them, but you know what? I, I smiled. They just couldn't understand. They just couldn't get over that. We don't think you ought to have that. I don't think I asked you. Can you come up with a tape that I asked you? We don't think you ought to have that plane. I didn't ask you. They just can't handle that. Because they want me to turn the other cheek. Yo, mama. I'll turn the other cheek when I'm preaching the gospel. You come slap me when I ain't preaching it. You better believe in healing. <laughs> oh, that's not scripture. Oh, yeah? When Jesus is preaching, you can persecute all you want. But Jesus wouldn't let nobody just run over him. They said, but what authority you do this? He said, what authority you do this? They said, we're not telling you. He said, I ain't telling you nothing either. Get out of here. <laughs> he walked off. That's what Jesus did. Jesus wasn't no wimp. 
I don't like wimpy Christians. Wimpy Christians, just beat me, just beat me. Beat yourself. <laughs> beat myself. <laughs> See, that's all Christian propaganda. A lot of times you, the devil will use the church so he can slap you. Just hurt you. And, and the Lord said, why are you allowing that to happen? What are you doing? I didn't tell you to do it. You're not walking in love. You're walking in stupidity. Now, Jesus did that many, many times. We seek Jesus of Nazareth. He said, I'm he. Bam, they hit the ground. Y'all want some more? <laughs> what, about, what about that encounter with Paul, the Saul of Tarsus? Knocked the boy off the donkey, slapped the boy down. He said, I'm Jesus Christ whom you persecuted. He didn't come and said, hey, I'm the one you've been mad at. He knocked the boy off the donkey. Why persecutest thou me? Because when you touch somebody's children, you are touching them. So I tell all you people who criticize me, you better keep your mouth shut because I am God's boy. He loves me. He loves me. He loves me. Some of y'all are freaking out. No, that's a renewed mind just that just said that. No, now if I'm preaching the gospel, I'm persecuted for Christ. That's a whole nother ball game. That's fine. I've had them. I mean, I've had them spit at me, swing knives at me, shoot at me. You know, I'm, I'm, I've had, my Lord, some crazy. But I was preaching the gospel. But I was out jogging. You want to shoot at me? You better have a fast bicycle. <laughs> That's a whole nother ball game. I'm not going to allow the devil, just because he said turn the cheek, I'm not going to allow the devil to use that as Christian propaganda to just beat me silly or beat you silly. Mm -hmm. Never take your guidance from the world's frown or smile. I like that. It's not the change of circumstances a man needs, but he himself needs to be changed. You cannot run away from what you carry with you. You cannot run away from what you carry with you. I used to lie to God all the time about my temper. You know, I ain't big enough to whip nobody. I, I look at myself, I mean, I'm five foot seven, but I'm taller than Jared Savelle. <laughs> Jared don't mind me saying, it. not by much. Now his granddaughter taller than both of us. <laughs> she took a picture with her day. I felt so intimidated. I, went, Gee. I tried to get up on my, <laughs> she just smiled. Little man, okay, I understand. You can't run away from what you carry, You're, what you carry with you. I told the Lord, I said, Lord, I have, I've lost my temper again. He said, look like to me, Jesse, you found it. I wish you would lose it. We'd have a lot less conversation on this if you lose it. Because I carried it with me. I've learned something too, not to carry wrong things that people do to me. You know, when I first went in the ministry, I, I, didn't, I never heard a word of faith. I heard this, you got to endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. I had enough renewed mind to understand that. I said, okay. But see, they use that as Christian propaganda to steal my offerings. Stole them. Stole them. And listen, I didn't have money in those days. And I didn't eat. They, they, they said, we're fasting. They didn't want to they didn't give me no food. So instead of getting mad at the guy, I would say, well, I'm going to fast today and just strengthen my spirit, man. And the devil said, look, you're hungry, and he ain't mad about it. I had enough renewed mind to figure that out. So, Satan, evidently, you want me to fast? No, no, oh, before you know it, I had more food than I could eat. I'd come home and Cass said, boy, you lost weight this week. Did you eat? Oh, don't worry about it. I didn't eat all week. That happened to me many, many times. I'm serious. Now, uh, I don't know if Word of Faith was, yeah, Word of Faith was in operation, but I wasn't asked to preach in Word of Faith cir circles in those days. I didn't know nothing about Word of Faith. So I'd preach Sunday morning, Sunday night, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, have an offering back, it's full. And I got it in my office. You want to come see it? It's there. And get a Dr. Pepper. That's yours. Thank you very much for preaching the real Bible. Run out of gas going home. Have to hitchhike at three o'clock in the morning to get home. And the devil thought he was trying to he's going to make me quit. You living in a dream world? Oh, no. I said, I'll walk that road and talk to Jesus. And I still see that preacher every once in a while, but I never carry that with me. Now, did he do me wrong? Yeah, he did me wrong. You want something? Not too long ago, maybe three years ago, I had a guy, glory to God. <laughs> now, Kathy would get mad. A guy, Kathy would say, I'll tell you what I'm going to put on her. She'd get mad, and she was right. I said, well, Kathy, I said, control yourself, woman. No, 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 you don't. 
I said, you, you wasn't with me, so that's fine. About three years ago, I came, I went to preach a meeting. Listen to this. This is going to shock you now. In the Word of Faith Church. But see, a renewed mind will help you. Watch this. I walk, I'm not in that church, Keith, 10 seconds. Pastor, grab me. Come to the back. I thought, good God. Well, he said, man, we in trouble financially here. You understand? I've had several speakers each night. The offerings have been just trash. He said, I know. Well, Jesse, I'm in trouble. I'm at least $35,000, $40,000 in the hole. Would you mind receiving an offering for the expenses of this meeting? He said, go ahead and receive your own offering after that. But you've got to help me. He said, there just ain't no more money left. We're in trouble. I'm going to have to go borrow money. So I was the last speaker. So I figured, well, I ain't getting nothing. Right? <laughs> if they ain't got nothing. So I said, yeah, I'll receive your offering for you. That'd be a blessing. He said, now listen, after you finish that, he said, when you finish preaching, then receive your own offering, yours. I said, okay. So I received this offering that, that night. I, they, they turned to the service, received the offering. The offering, I think, was what, 42 or 40, 41 or $43,000. He went to shouting. Now he's in the black, okay? Glory to God. Oh. So I know he's thinking, my God, man, he ain't no more money. Came at the end of the um, time I finished preaching, and he went, he went like this, receive your I said, okay, we're going to receive an offer from Jesse Plans Ministries. And, then, and I said, why don't y'all just, and y'all, we're going to go ahead and count it and all that kind of, they're going to count it and all that kind of stuff. My offering was $173,000. <laughs> whoa, whoa, wait, 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 whoa, whoa. It's wonderful. Yeah, it's wonderful, but I didn't get it, mama. <laughs> yeah, I did the same thing you did. Oh, $173,000. I got a check for $5,000. And I would have never known, Mike, I would have never known. But the secretary said, I will not be a part of this fraud. Brother Jesse, $173,000 came in and you got $5,000. I said, well, I guess he needed it. Kathy said, you're going back? <laughs> <laughs> I said, yeah, I'm going back. I wouldn't go out. I said, yeah, I'm not going back for him. I'm going back for me. Now, if I sit there and brood on that, I could think about my grandpa. What would he do? <laughs> no conscience. Where's Fred? Uh, witness protection. <laughs> or some good friends of mine in New Orleans. <laughs> good friends of mine. I got to watch what I say around there. He messing with you? You want me to put a bat on his legs? I want to go, yes. Yes, the hospital, not the morgue, hospital. <laughs> They'll do it in a second. They'll do it. They like me. Thank God they do. They really like Kathy. We got to have security around the house. You know what he told Kathy? Just drop our name. Ain't nobody touch that house. He's serious, buddy. But then I know if I do that, <laughs> I'm going to have slot machines in the church. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> I, know, I know how it works. But a renewed mind, I said, so you know what it is? I prayed for the man. Evidently, he needed it. I went back again. Why? Not for him, but for me. Because all he has to do is repent. And we're back to normal, according to God. See, it's not the change of circumstances a man needs, but he himself needs to be changed. You cannot run away from what you carry with you. So I don't care. I just told that story. And, you know, but that was a lot of money. Don't misunderstand me. And, you know, those people gave. So, you know what? I prayed for the people that gave, oh, Lord, that wherever that seed went to, that it would grow to their benefit. Yeah. Because they, they, they wanted that to be our blessing to, to the ministry. You understand what I'm saying? That was a lot of money. But that's okay. I went back. I didn't feel I had a great time. Why? I'm not bragging on myself. Because of a renewed mind. God said, bless those that curse you. That means buy them dinner. Pray for those that despite for you. Not like this, Jesus. Kill them all, Jesus. Just kill them. Just kill them slowly, Jesus. Slow. No. Pray for those that despitefully use you. Those are hard things to the flesh, to a flesh that's alive. But to a flesh that's crucified, that's nothing. Hmm. See, the word rule mind molds the life the character, the thought, and the imagination of the believer. The word rule mind molds the life, the character, the thought, 
and the imagination of the believer. I love imagination. I love when my granddaughter starts talking about stuff and you know, she's imagining. I do the same thing myself. I sit down and begin to imagine. Oh man, I think, see, I call it faithing. I call it faith imagining. My God, all of a sudden I can see something that's Im- unbelievable and impossible, but doable. My granddaughter come up, coming to me the other day. She says, I want to fly. <laughs> I said, you want to fly? What, like Tinkerbell, that the name of that? Fly like Tinkerbell. I said, okay, we'll get you some wings. So I went, to, uh, Kathy went to the store and bought her some wings. She said, fly with me, grandfather. I said, man, I don't have no wings. She said, flop your arms. <laughs> so like an idiot, I'm running down the hall of my house, flopping my arms. Now in her little mind, we flying. I went to see the man of steel the other day. And I thought, that guy's built. Kathy, you remember when I looked like that? She said, no. <laughs> no. I don't think you ever looked like that. Well, I thought I did. Imagination. You thought I was off the sermon there, didn't you? Yeah, you thought I just out in left field? No. Let me tell you something that's wrong with the religious mind. That's why Jesus said to be transformed. The religious mind is obstinate. It's very obstinate. It has fixed opinions and it has become fossilized. It looks good, but it's fossilized. It's dead. It, and how did it get that way? You ready for this? By cloistered seclusion. The religious mind is obstinate. It has fixed opinions and has become fossilized. Boy, it looks like a beautiful bronze, but it's nothing in it. And it got that way by cloistered seclusion. It's amazing I mean, people that Jesus told everybody to go in the world, preach the gospel, let your light shine, and they go in a cave and sit there for 50 years. You get an obstinate religious mind. Because if you're not creating life, the only thing left is death. Cloistered seclusion. That's why I tell people to come to the Believer's Convention. Well, I, I don't have enough money to travel. What, what about God? Have you forgot God? You see what I'm saying? Have you forgot God? That's what I'm saying. Let God do what God does. You know, when God told me to do some things, you know, he don't think twice. He said, add a five million dollars to that. Jesus, five million. Have you checked the accounts lately? No, don't need to. If it's not there, create it. My, my, my renewed mind says, fine, let's go, move. I don't mean that pridefully. I, I also have a business mind. I think, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. whoa, but I, I rebuke that. And the reason why my mind's not obstinate is because I don't cloister myself in the seclusion. I want to hear what Brother Moore has to say. I want to hear what a doctor has to say. I want to hear what Brother Co- and Glory. And I want to hear. I want to hear what Creflo said. And I want to hear what Bill Winston said. I, I want to hear it, not heard it. See, when you heard something, you bronze up. It's like them little baby shoes. You bronze them. Now, they look nice, but your baby will never put that foot in there ever again. And you'd be surprised. Some people never grow past bronze baby shoes. Hmm. Cloistered seclusion. The religious mind is obstinate. It has fixed opinions and it's become fossilized. But what is Christianity? Christianity is an invitation to a renovation. It is the gospel of renewal. Christianity is an invitation to a renovation. It is the gospel of renewal. You know, I thought Kathy was finished with our house. I have a beautiful home. I live in a plantation home. I have a huge plantation home. Big white columns, I mean, all that kind of, And I tell you what, I'm a southern, southern gentleman. Brother Keith Moore bought me a white hat and a cane. <laughs> like you see in the movies. I love that thing, man. And I walk out of my balcony like a southern gentleman. <laughs> People think, that guy has got it made. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> I have got it. I walk out there with my hat and with my cane. It's the South. Yeah, I try to get Kathy in them, them kind of dresses, but she, she don't, you know, she don't want to do that. I say, oh, put on one of them uh, uh, scarlet O'Hare dresses. She say, you want me to tear the curtains down? No, no, don't tear the curtains down. <laughs> Carol Burnett tore the curtains down. 
know? No, 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 no. She said, oh, then you want me to go buy a new dress? No, just forget what I said. I, I, you don't need to go buy nothing. So we walk on that balcony. Now I thought, now my God, man, I got a balcony. I mean, and it, it, you can see the Mississippi River. And you're just sitting up there, Kathy's drinking a coffee with a little finger up in the air. She says, you know, it's hot. I said, it's New Orleans, Kathy. It's called summertime. I think I'll have some ceiling fans and stuff like that. I want, I want some gas lights up here. I said, well, do whatever you think. It's fine. I came back and there's the ceiling fans up there and this beautiful gas light. I said, boy, that thing, copper, that's a beautiful. Where did you, did you get that from Bevelo? She said, I sure did. And Ricky, my uh, <laughs> director of engineering, he's smiling. I said, how, how much that thing cost? Now I was thinking, Hundred dollars, hundred and fifty dollars. <laughs> Ricky go. <laughs> <laughs> now when you hear people laugh like that, you about ready to get hit. You understand? <laughs> but it was already up there. I said, Well, how, how much did that thing cost? And everybody started walking away from me. <laughs> I said, Whoa, whoa, whoa! Everybody going here? Whoa, whoa, whoa! Stop! How much did that cost? Don't it look good? No, no. I know it looked good. Yeah. What it cost? Doesn't it just accent the house? What does it cost? She said, $3,000. Then I walked away. <laughs> I said to myself, I got to sell my hat and my cane now. <laughs> I said, no. And do you know what? God is my witness that afternoon. I was out in the front. I walked up the, walked up the levee. Because, you know, the boat's coming by and all that kind of stuff. People said, boy, that's a beautiful light fixture. And that's Kathy. <laughs> Boy, I since you put them ceiling fans, I tell you that all that. I said, yeah, my wife does all that. She can just do anything she wants. I said, yes. <laughs> and you don't seem to mind. I lied like a dog. I said, no. <laughs> the Lord said, you just lied. I said, you ain't never been married, Jesus. Yeah, listen. <laughs> you you got to understand. <laughs> <laughs> He said, I'm married to you. I said, that's right, that's right, that's right. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> My God. <laughs> oh, Lord. Christianity is an invitation to a renovation. The reason why I said something funny, because I could feel those heat from them eyes. You know how like man of steel? It should burn right through you, buddy. Glory to God. It's the gospel of renewal. <laughs> now, how do you get there? Let me close. How do you get this renewed mind? The word rule mind is made up of practice and discipline. Did you notice when Brother Colton was preaching last night? Every time he'd go, <coughs> you know, when he first started coughing, I thought there was something in his throat. And Keith went, ah, I said, this is planned. So I was waiting for Keith to go, <coughs> I thought, oh, okay, brother. But every time that symptom came, because his mind is disciplined, and because of practice, he went against it. He didn't just say, well, Lord, do your work. <laughs> Just do your work quickly, Lord, before this flu kills me. No, he wasn't thinking, he wasn't thinking of dying. He just said, no, I'm not. The, he called it, I like what he called it, symptoms. Most people would just call it the flat flu. But see, flu starts, or any kind of sickness starts with symptoms. So if you can knock out the symptoms, you knock out the disease. Yeah. Yeah. You see, the word rule mind is disciplined or is made of practice and discipline. Love in its purest form is discipline. It's just the word rule mind. Now, I want to tell you something. Because you have come to a believer's convention, you're going to be, whole, you're going to be held responsible for what you heard and what you're hearing. And then you want it to work and function in practice. A lot of people can't understand. They said, that just to do planet for some crazy reason. He just seemed to be so blessed. Yes, I, I, yes, yes. I don't mean that pridefully. Please, don't take it as such. I just decided to believe what he said. You see, I, when I met Kenneth Copeland or when I heard him, I knew it was for a reason. I'll tell you this. When he said, oh, no man, anything but to love him. I thought, has done, he done lost his mind. I, and I said that yesterday. How are you going to buy a house unless you mortgage it? How are you going to buy a car unless you finance it? And it blew me away when I found out he had a plane. He said, any preacher can have a plane. I said, my God, man, preacher's trying to get a car, much less a plane. 
Those days, you, if you had a new car, that was something, boy. But, you know, Brother Copeland broke the barrier of aviation for the Christian world. Busted it. Busted it to pieces, man. Kept believing God and kept giving. I mean, he gave a plane away. And even Jerry Savelle, you've heard it pretty. He said, well, how are we going to get home? Well, we'll fly home and then, you know, we'll fix it up and give it to the man. Yeah, he broke it. He didn't just crack it. He, he obliterated it. And now, and when you go to a Kent, Kent of Copeland Ministers conference, you go out there, there are planes all over the place. Happy Caldwell probably flew his plane today. Am I right? Came with uh, uh, Keith Moore, you flew your plane? Yeah. Uh, I, had, I had my plane. I flew it. Uh, who else? My Lord. Gee, I'm, planes everywhere. People say, oh, I'll tell you one thing. I don't think they ought to have that. Well, in this, in this fast world, you need that. It's a piece of transportation. That's all it is, is transportation. It's it. It's going from one point A to point B. Well, why couldn't you fly Delta? Because Delta can't fly my schedule. Delta cried when I bought my plane. <laughs> I, 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 I tell you what, I mean, I spent some money on Delta. Ooh, because I was flying every day. I mean, and I didn't get any deals. I tried to get some. I mean, you know, when you, when you got to go and come, go and come, you just pay top dollar and forget it. Then I got to thinking, you know, I could own my plane. I could own the plane. And, but the only way I got it was through a person that had a, a word rule mind. And that was kind of cool. Jesse, you know how Brett Copeland looks like this. Jesse, you need to get an airplane. Yeah. But I'm thinking, how? <laughs> he said, why don't you look around my ministry? And if you'd like to look, well, me and Kathy come up there and we're looking. Gloria's sister. She says this. You need an airplane. I said to myself, she's talking to Kenneth Copeland, man. I said, well, you know, we're getting some extra money. We're trying to save our money so we can go on more television. Remember that? Me, we was trying to be as humble as we could be. And she said, you know, we'd rather, if we get more money, we'd just go buy more television time, just preach the gospel more. And, and she said, why don't you just do both? I went, both? Ain't nobody ever told me I could do both. Most people told you you can't even do one, much less both. I said, both? That was Missy, Missy Johnson. Both. Me and Kathy walked out there and said, you know, we can do both. We, we can do both. Let's do both. So we start, we put our faith on the line. Now we had to have a renewed mind right there. Actually, my mind went, it, it, it went out of conformity to transform. Boom. I said, we are going to get a plane and go on television and open up foreign offices. And we're going to do it all this year. And I thought, praise God. Kathy said, I agree with you. So we just agreed. Then I came to one of these meetings. Brother Copeland said, Jesse, come up here. Y'all might have seen that. It's, it's on it. He said, by the end of this year, you'll, everything you've ever dreamed and prayed for will come to pass. Now, that was confirmation. But first thing, my, my mind, my mind my, I'm talking about my thinking mind. Ooh, God going to have to move fast. <laughs> He's going to have to move real fast. But well, he does move fast if you get out the way. What's blocking him is you. Just get out the way. And do you know by the end of that year, come, Christmas, uh, come New Year's Eve that year, we had to pray new prayers because everything we ever believed for came to pass. What, Catherine, what, uh, six months, five months? Everything. Cash. Cash. <laughs> Brother Copeland has never told me to go borrow money for an aircraft. You know how many others have? When we were believing God for our aircraft? They said, why don't you just go get it? Pay it off quick. I'm not saying that's wrong. I don't know. It's wrong for me. Oh, no man, anything. I heard him say that. You're cutting a covenant with people you don't know. But you can hear the devil's voice. Yeah, but how are you going to get the plane? How are you going to get the plane? Shut up. I ain't talking to you. <laughs> See, principalities work through personalities. Good personalities. Move upon them to make you do something you shouldn't do when you know God told you to do something different. But you see what I'm saying when you understand? But the word rule might have shut that down. No, we're not going to do that. And I'll, let me close with this. When I bought that plane, I'll never forget it. Glory to God. <laughs> Keith, they sent down these high, high dollar lawyers. Now, I was born at night, but not last night. I've done some major business deals in my life. I don't mean that privately. So I'm sitting there. 
Now, when you got cash, cash is king. I don't care anybody tell you, son. Cash is king. So I'm sitting there and, you know, they look and I know what they're thinking. This is a dumb preacher. Hey, he's just a preacher. Sit down there. So these, these two lawyers and the guy representing the guy that owns the plane, had all, all the stuff is there. Uh, they call me Dr. DePlanis. They were very kind, Dr. DePlanis. We, we found out that you're interested in this aircraft. I said, yes, I am. I didn't say I'm just smiling at him. Well, this is what we want for it. I said, go ahead. It, may, it doesn't make any difference what you want. And they just looked at I said, I'm the 800 pound gorilla. You want a banana? I said, this is what we're going to do. And I took that meat Noah. They just backed up. They said, you are a strong minister. I said, no, we do business. I said, come here to do business. I'll pray for you later, but we're doing business right now. <laughs> well, this is what we want. I said, we'll do this. Oh, no, we, that's impossible. Now, see, when you stop, just five seconds seems like five hours when you're dealing with a lot of money. Millions of dollars. Millions, okay? Millions of dollars. So I stopped. Okay, okay, wait, okay. And I, I heard it in my mind. The Lord said, you got him. I said, I got him. I got him. Lord, I got him. Well, how about this? No, no. I said, we'll do this. Reverend, we just can't do that. I said, well, then, then I have to leave. No, 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 please. Please sit down. I said, let me tell you how serious I am about this. I said, can I, can I use, a, use that phone there? Oh, yes, sir. I said, I'm, I, I'm, I'll make a conference call. I made a conference call. I called my director of finance who then was Tammy Moonahan, wonderful person, was a Baptist pastor's wife, worked for me for 14 years. And she had to leave because they moved her, her husband to another, another area preaching, you know, so I understand that. I said, Tammy, this, this, she said, they all call me boss. Yeah, boss. I said, I have such and such, yes, and such. I said, and we're about ready to, nego we're negotiating on this plane price. And uh, I said, uh, if I want to wire the money, how long will it take for to get in accounts? She said, about a minute. I said, so pu push, push me in here. If I punch this button, the money start flying. She said, yeah, boss, it starts flying. So I looked at him. I said, somebody going to take this money. Is it you? And I raised my finger up. Do I hit the button? I'm going to lunch in the next five minutes. Sweat start coming down their face. Because it's millions of dollars. Sweat, boy. Sweat. I saw that lawyer sweat. I said, Somebody's going to take this money. I'm going to buy a plane today. Is this the one? <laughs> I said, Tammy, I touched this button. She said, boss, you touch that button. She flies. Because we got their account. Do we have a deal here? I made them an offer. They couldn't refuse. <laughs> See the finger. But you got to have something behind the finger. <laughs> you ain't, this ain't no bluff. See, God told me what to pay for it because it's his. Hey, mine. He just lets me use it. That's his. So I got my finger. <laughs> I am loving this. They said, you mean to tell me you're going to pay us cash? You don't want cash? Oh, yeah. Yeah. But he said, people don't buy this kind of a plain cash. You know, you, you go through a finance uh, institution. I said, I am a finance institution. <laughs> Tammy, you still there? I'm there, boss. We got a deal. I mean, literally sweat. I said, we got a deal. I said, slide them papers over to me. I said, I'm going to sign this baby with this finger up. I'm going to do it just like this. You got it? <laughs> we got a deal. Yes, sir. I hit that butt. I could hear my money go. Boom, just slide out. I got up and said, anybody want lunch? I'm buying today. You mean you got some more money after you did all this? You still got some money? I said, that ain't, that just, that, that's just the tip of the iceberg. Oh, yeah, let's go eat. I said, but let's, let me walk past my plane. And I just looked at it. 
That's what a word rule mind does. Amen. And I thank God that Kenneth Copeland taught me how to do that. Amen. Taught me how to believe the word of God over what I was thinking. Now, I, I negotiated. I, I am a negotiator. Leroy Thompson said, that's just that you plan to negotiate. Oh, yeah. I'm Jewish. I don't pay retail. I've been adopted into the family. You understand? We're doing business here. And I've now been flying that plane seven years. Oh, and let me give you an announcement. I'm getting very close to another one. Now, this is the big boy here. <laughs> oh, God. It's such a good place. The other day, we passed up Southwest Airlines. It made them mad. We went. <laughs> Pilots don't like to be passed up. <laughs> and I was finished until the Lord said, you're going to let your fate stagnate? I said, I don't think I was letting my fate stagnate. He says, so that's all I can do? I said, but I don't need another air conditioner. Did I say anything about need? Well, no, sir. So you're going to let your fate stagnate. You're on cruise control. You're moving, but no longer by your power. I said, forgive me, Lord. Now, Jesse, tell me what you want. And when he said want, I started licking my lip. <laughs> Jesus, what I want. I want a plane that I can bring other people with me if they want to come. At no charge to them. I want to go anywhere in the world one stop. The Lord said, go pick the plane. I said, well, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to buy the number. I'm going to get the number before I get the plane, the end number. So I bought the number. Now, I said, Lord, I'm ready. Do your thing. <laughs> and the Lord said, you mean you want me to do this? <laughs> I said, that would be fine. <laughs> Let me give you my account number, Jesus. <laughs> Let me show you this account <laughs> And there was no sweat on me. It's coming soon. Ooh, it's coming soon. The only reason why we hadn't had it because we don't have a hanger yet to get to put it in. And we're in negotiation right now on that kind of stuff. But it's coming. See, you don't put that kind of asset out, leave that out on the tarmac, especially not New Orleans. Because somebody will figure out how to fly it. <laughs> you you got to lock it down. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? So when you understand this, be not conformed, but be you transformed. Just remember this. Don't become fossilized. Don't let your mind become obstinate. Don't become clustered seclusion. Share your faith with other people. Let them share their faith with you. You're constantly moving. In other words, you keep the awe. You're always greased. And it'll work every time, not some of the time. Did you enjoy it this morning? Lord of God, I went a little long. Did you? I wanted you to think a little bit. This preaching should never supersede thought. It should make you think. And when you understand that, there's not a thing you can't receive in life. Nothing. God will do anything you can believe, but he can't do anything you can't believe. So if you'll believe it, give God a job. Don't put him on the un unemployment line. Give him a job. Maybe show my lesson. Some I mean, of you need to add to your church. You need to start building on your church. Some of you need your church paid off. What you got to do is pray for the finger. I never forget that. You know, I hadn't thought about that finger until I thought about that new plane. He went, You mean you won't use the finger? Yes, yes. You know, he never told me to do that. I just did that myself. But he, he used that. I had a thought that God used. Now, that shocked you, didn't it? I had a thought that God used. He will use some of my thoughts. He says, whatever you decide is fine. What do you think about the situation? That's in our relationship and fellowship with God. 
I said, well, Lord, I'd do it this way. He said, well, then let's do it. Okay. He said, you're burning daylight. And when he said that, I said, you've been watching John Wayne movies. <laughs> I heard John Wayne said, that you're burning daylight. That'll be the day. He said, well, you are. Move on it. Let's go. So we do that in everything we do. I've had people say, yeah, man, make the fastest decision. No, I don't. It's just when I know God said something, ain't no use waiting on it. Just move. So I'm going to say this by faith. In the very near future, I'll fly here and something you're going to shock the world. Amen. You know what I might do? Instead of the helicopter flying over my house, I might just do a circle of the jet over Fox News. <laughs> <laughs> Let them come outside. <laughs> it's okay. Did you enjoy it? Give Jesus a hand clap for that.